I got into orienteering through Orienteering Calgary's Hogue Adventure Running Program. I had always liked the outdoors, hiking, trail running, and all that sort of stuff, and orienteering was a perfect match for that. I quickly fell in love with the sport as I progressed all the way up onto the national team, and most of all, orienteering has taken me to places I never thought I would have been before. I started orienteering back in the 70s, believe it or not, in the Niagara Peninsula, and Pat and Dick de Saint Croix had an organization going there, and they set up meets. I actually went to the championships in Montreal in 1970. Um, so I've been orienteering for a long, long, long time. What I like about orienteering is that it really challenges me in terms of my physical ability and also my mental ability. And even now, I find I still learn things and uh, I'm challenged to run. Why I chose orienteering is because it's a really great combination of things. Not only do you get to be outside in a bunch of really cool different environments, but also you get the physical element, running up over hills and trails and everything, and the mental component of navigating, uh, choosing the best route, uh, keeping track of where you are along the way. Um, and I think that's just like a really fun combination. I chose orienteering because it's a super fun sport, super engaging, and you know it's, it's like an in the moment sport. And the training for orienteering translates super nicely into cross training for any other endurance sport, whether that be biking, running, swimming, cross-country skiing, you know, all of those sports, cross-training is excellent. This is our second edition of Faces of Calgary Sport. Uh, two weeks ago, we featured biathlon and cross-country skiing. So today we're going to be talking about orienteering. And uh, just looking outside, it's a beautiful sunny day in Calgary. And uh, gets me excited to get outside and to do various things. So we have a great panel. Um, this is our way of virtually sharing sport options with the community um, and not just Calgary. This is again, open, sp spread the word because we're just talking about options of sport. And uh, until we can do our all sport one day in all sport one city and have people in person doing a lot of the sports, we're gonna be talking about what some options are. So. Um, first, I'm going to introduce our panel and then give a breakdown on our audience. So it's always interesting to know who we're talking to. So uh, first person on the panel, Charlotte McNaughton. Uh, she's been involved in orienteering since the early 90s. She's a three-time competitor at the World Orienteering Championships. So for those of you who don't know, there are worlds. And uh, we'll be talking also Jan Eric on Team Canada. So she's been the president of both the Alberta Orienteering Association and Orienteering Canada. Charlotte has helped organize many orienteering events, including large international events. She's currently on the board of Foothills Orienteering as the VP Junior Development and as a volunteer chairperson of SoGo Adventure Running. SoGo Adventure Running is a weekly orienteering program that runs in the spring and fall for Calgary, an area uh, for kids two to 18. SoGo also runs school programs and summer camps. So we'll be elaborating on that. Uh, um, I've known Charlotte for many years. Uh, she's also been uh, at various Olympics and, and volunteering. So Charlotte, thank you for joining us. Next, we have Jan Eric Ness, who has been heavily involved in orienteering for the past six years. He's represented Canada at four Junior World Championships, several World Cups, and most recently, the 2019 World Championships held in Norway. He's on Team Canada Committee, helping develop elite orienteering within Canada, and has de been developing SOGO Bridge, a program that offers aspiring orienteers guidance and support of pursuing their ambitions. He's currently in his third year of geomatics engineering at UFC, and he also competes in the varsity cross country track and field teams. Jan Eric is a big advocate for alternative training and enjoys working in cross country skiing, biking, triathlons, alongside orienteering and competing in speed skating throughout his youth. How do you have time for anything, Jan Eric? Uh, welcome. And finally, we have Bogey. I'm gonna work on this Bogey, your last name, Giorfi. Oh, thank you. She's the executive director of the Alberta Orienteering Association for four years and now lives in her favorite city, which is Calgary. She's been here for 15 years. Her whole career in the sports and recreation field um, has been in the sports and recreation field. She has a degree in physical education and 10 years of coaching background before moving to fitness and sport organization leadership. She's very involved and volunteers with different community sport programs and her passion is to help people get active outdoors. She believes that for kids to grow 
up healthy and happy, they must spend significant time being active outside. Uh, her family spends all their free time outdoors, loves mountain biking, hiking, paddle boarding, cross country skiing, orienteering, and competing in biathlon. She started orienteering in high school in Hungary because she always got lost everywhere. Oh boy, <laughs> there's some stories behind that. She fell in love with the sport and learned to navigate, which helped uh, helped her confidence and lifetime adventures in the mountains. She also is a parent of kids involved in orienteering. So thank you to our panel. Uh, as I promised, I'll give a little bit of a, of a debrief on who the audience is. So about 64% of our audience have heard of the sport, have seen pictures, but know nothing about the sport. About 4% have watched videos of the sport uh, on TV or online. And about 32% uh, have tried the sport or actively take part in the sport. So welcome everybody. Uh, this is gonna be interactive. If you have questions, um, we will get them in the chat, but I'm gonna go through, uh, I have a lot of questions. And I'm gonna actually start with Bogey because I had heard of orienteering back from my speed skating days. Some of my uh, friends in Europe were doing it. Um, but can you actually tell the audience, can you describe what is orienteering? Uh, orienteering for me um, and most of people, it's a really fun outdoor activity. And very um, think about when you go a trail run or a hike, but you're actually going to get a map and you have to make sense of that map. And on the map, there are marked uh, mark spots and you have to visit them. If you're competitive, you, of course, you're trying to do that as fast as you can. If you're just trying to make sense of the map, of course, you just spend a lot of time wandering out and having a lot of fun with it. But it's a sport in Europe, very popular. Um, in the Scandinavian countries, there are actually events which attracts 20,000 people. So uh, it depends on where you go um, and what you're looking for, you find your outdoor adventure. Uh, Charlotte, I'm going to ask you, um, because you've, you've competed, you've been involved, um, you also uh, have so many programs that are involving kids. Uh, Bogie talked about, you know, having this map and finding your way. Um, that will intimidate right there. I mean, the reality is that will intimidate some people like myself, because I, I don't love maps. Um, you know, I want, I want a sign with an arrow. So, um, you know, can you, can you elaborate a little bit on sort of just how then even kids get involved and, and how people who, you know, some of our questions from the audience are, I'm not great with directions. So can, can you elaborate a bit on that on, on how people can sort of enjoy that? Yeah, absolutely. So, so some people come to the sport because they truly love maps and, and, just that's their thing. And other people come to the sport because they want to develop those skills. And, uh, and what's interesting, I mean, there's different ways to start the sport. So maybe I'll back up to say in order to orienteer, you, there, there is a specific map that's made just for the sport. And it's super, super detailed. It will have trees and rocks, like a, a really, really high level of detail for the sport. And, and you, you might do the sport in a city park or a university campus, or there's lots of orienteering events that are in more forested, remote areas. So I guess my first suggestion to that is if, if that whole sense of direction is intimidating for you, start it in a city park because yeah, yeah, can't go too wrong, right? But, uh, but, but the orienteering club will help you out. Right, it's pretty straightforward. The, the maps are standard, different colors on the map represent different things. One of the most important things that we always try to talk about is just, just make sure that your map is facing the same direction that, that, that you are, right? So back in the olden days, when we'd pull out a paper map in the car, right? And if you had the map upside down to the direction you were traveling, it's really difficult, right? So that's kind of the number one rule in orienteering is let's just figure out when we work on this skill, let's get your map to, to match the terrain around you. And then it's just a lot easier to, um, to, to, to work on your map reading skills and your navigation skills. You can absolutely learn those skills and, and an orienteering club will help you. That's what, that's what we do. 
I'm getting a note here that uh, I have to sign up with some people and because I, I am, I, I want to try it and, I, and I'm intimidated. Um, Jan Eric, I'm going to ask you my first question to you and we're going to go back probably back, um, you know, to Bogan Charlotte with some of the basics maybe but when I read your bio, I mean, you, you are currently still involved in so much. So what for you, what's the draw to orienteering? Um, you know, I think uh, ever since I started doing orienteering, like as I brought it more and more into my life throughout high school, because I used to do quite a few uh, different sports. I had done some travel soccer and hockey and uh, what brought me more to running was that I had gotten a few too many concussions. Um, <laughs> so it, it tends to be a pretty safe sport in, uh, in that respect. And uh, what the reason why I like to have orienteering in my life is that unlike any other sport, um, this sport requires you to go to the place that you're going to run and to understand uh, that terrain or that, that type of city. You know, you can go to these beautiful old towns in Switzerland and you have to understand that the routes are going to be really, really tricky because you're no longer in a a rectangular block place like uh, in Calgary or in the suburbs and, and instead you're running along churches or maybe there's a bridge that you're going under and then uh, if you're going to go to some other cool races because there are big five-day events of like you race half an hour each day for five days uh, and you can go to Switzerland or France or Sweden and you have to learn that terrain beforehand because it's totally different. You can imagine yourself going out into the prairies versus going to, um, to the jungle or going to the mountains. And the forests that you think of when you hear those sounds are totally, totally, uh, totally different. So I just, it's a constant adventure and it's, it's so beautiful to have that in your life. You know, you talk about going to Switzerland and all these places, we're all like, Oh, we can't wait till we can even think about doing something like that mm -hmm. again. Um, Charlotte, let's, can we uh, talk a bit more about these maps? Cause you started it and then Jan Eric is talking. I mean, how do you get them online? Like, I don't even know, you, you know, you're talking about a city park. H how does this exist? Like, yeah. it's a basic question, but I, I don't even, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So orienteering, some sports that you can just go and, do on your own, like cross country skiing, for instance, or you can join a club. Um, but to get involved in orienteering, you essentially do need to connect with an orienteering club. Um, and so, uh, so the best thing to do in Calgary is, is to connect with, um, with Foothills Orienteering. I think the URL is orienteeringcalgary.ca. And um, of course, we're in a bit of a tricky situation right now with COVID, but normally uh, we have events and we will this spring as well, um, but events uh, one weekday evening, um, every week on Wednesday evenings usually. Um, and, uh, and then there's often events on the weekends as well. And so, so the best way to do the sport is to go to an event that an orienteering club is putting on. And that's, that's where you'll get the map. And because someone has to take, what happens in the sport is, uh, you, you, you get the map and there's checkpoints that are marked on the map. And in the terrain, there's actually um, markers in the terrain. So that, like, an orange and white orienteering flag. Um, and so that way, you know that you're in the right spot. And if it's a competitive event, we, we've got lots of cool tech in the sport. You've got a little timing device that you wear on your finger and there's a little uh, box at the control flag and you insert it and that that shows that it proves that you were there. And so at the finish line, you down anyways. So there's lots of tech for a competitive um, sport, but anyways, so at an orienteering, so the club will needs to put these markers out in the terrain. So, so you need to go to an orienteering event essentially. So connect with the club to, uh, to try it out. And when you go to an event, they are absolutely more than willing to show a beginner um, the ropes. And you're, I think the orienteering club I was just checking in with them the other day and they are planning this spring to offer some, some um, beginner courses for newcomers. So okay. just kind of that's, waiting that for would the be COVID, my place. <laughs> the COVID numbers to yeah. settle out a little bit and see how we can do that. 
Yeah, and we're, you know what, and uh, thank you for bringing that up because we are doing well. But again, it's one of these sports we think, okay, you know, it's a little more opportunity than perhaps some others. Um, Bogey, you know, a lot of uh, Sport Calgary members and a lot of members in the community want an activity that is sort of inclusive, especially right now with, with this isolation situation that's inclusive for the whole family. And so, you know, I'm hearing everybody say about running. I mean, I will go for a run, but I was a sprinter. So literally my, my jogging is slower than many people's walk. So, you know, is this sport available for, for people if, they, if they're not good runners? Um, and how about the accessibility side for people with disabilities? Bogey, if you could uh, elaborate on that, that would be great. Yeah, for sure. So actually, I think majority of people who come to orienting events are not runners. They more just like to be outside and active. We have a large uh, number of uh, uh, senior population too, and most of them walk the course. We have families. So you can come around with your five-year-old, pick up the beginner course and walk one kilometer and it's really more motivating for the kids to go um, along because it's like for them it's like a treasure hunt of course there is no treasure but you know we'll sell that to them <laughs> uh, and also if you are an adventure racer or, or just want to have a really good run you can come uh, eventually develop your skills you can pick up the advanced course and run a seven eight kilometer course um, which is really really engaging so it's for everyone and um what was your question? Access, access. Yeah, with yes. people so with So the thing is, anyone who can walk and comfortable walking, um, welcome to come. We're gonna find them a course to do, and we teach. We usually in the tried events, there's always always volunteers and activities. We teach how to get out and and about. And uh, also, we have um, an access program with Sogo Adventure Running for kids who want to learn more and take their time uh, to get more into the sport. So uh, there is a program through the through the Sogo program for those kids who need a little bit more support, more patient and more uh, guidance with learning the activities. So yeah, absolutely everyone is welcome and uh, we just want people to come. Of course, it's a little tricky now, but we're still planning to do uh, activities uh, uh, with the guidelines. Uh, it's going to be a little bit more um, work for us, but but hopefully we'll get back to normal soon and uh, we can have a lot of people come out and, and try our events. Yeah, Maybe I'll, I'll just add, I'll yes, just add to that. We are just a truly a sport for life for all ages. We um, at our national championships, we uh, we've just added the 90 plus category because because <laughs> we have demand for it. We have people in that category. So Wow. Yeah, it's an absolute sport for life. Wow. And, and uh, um, yep. one, one extra piece is that uh, because, yeah, when you first think about orienteering, you think about, oh, well, if I'm going to have to run through the forest, like how, uh, if I have some sort of a disability, how am I going to make this work? And so the, over the past, I think 10 or so years, the entire orienteering uh, community internationally has come out with a few extra versions of the sport. Um, and I think that we're, we're adding a few of those bits here. And so one of them is where instead of having to run to these checkpoints in the forest, there's a course that you're just going to go on a gravel road and then you have to pick out the, uh, it's called precision orienteering. And then once you get to a certain location, you pick exactly where it would be. And so it it adds an option for when you have the rest of the family that's running out in the forest. Um, maybe you have a grandparent that still wants to be there and do a little something. They're able to, to do that. So there are other accessibility options. Okay, great. Thanks, guys. And so just so everybody knows, we will continue um, to follow when things are available. Um, the, the crew here will let us know. And so we'll post that and, and spread the word. So, um, you know, just continue to check in with us. If you check in the chat, the Foothills Orienteering website um, has been posted on there and we will uh, have everything on our website, sportcalgary.ca after this session. Um, Jan Eric, there's, there's a question here. Um, how, Oh, how can this skill, how can it be elevated to a competitive level? And yeah. like, how hard can it be um, so, actually yeah, to actually map? <laughs> it's, it's a good question. Um, so the way that I think about orienteering, um, 
is I think of it as it's a cross country race. They're the same dis the same winning times, just a little bit of a lower distance because you're not going to run as quickly as you do through a forest as you would um, as you would on grass like a regular high school cross country race. And the only difference there is that you're going to need to navigate to each turn. And so you go from the start to the first checkpoint to the second checkpoint, and you have to do that in order. And, and orienteering, what's special about it is that you don't have to be an incredible uh, runner or have an incredible cardio to do well, because you're running through the forest or you're running through, um, through the cities and there's there are different route choices that can happen. You can, maybe you decide that you're gonna go over a hill and someone else goes around it. And so just in there, there could be a 10 second difference in that control. And if you have 20 controls over a race and it's like a five kilometer race, then depending on if you pick the right route choice, uh, it can add up to you winning or losing by minutes. And so you can make up time on maybe your friend that was a really good runner, but uh, not so great at picking all of the right route choices and things. And, and that's what's really special about it is there's such a different uh, combination of, of natural talents that, that come into being a good orienteer. All right, so strategy involved. Um, we'll, we'll get to, we have a ton of questions. We'll get to uh, those in just a minute. Um, we're gonna show you a video and uh, yeah, we apologize for that first one that it was just audio, but this one is why you like orienteering. So take a look. My favorite part of orienteering, apart from all the amazing people, is how you can't just shut off your brain and mindlessly run. You have to think about what you're doing and be alert. This helps break up the monotony of running because you have something fun to do as you go, rather than just pointlessly grinding out the miles. Right, so orienteering is a wonderful sport for young people and for old people. And one of the things that my wife Gabrielle and I love to do now is to coach the younger people in the SOGO program, which we're very proud of. We've been doing this for probably uh, 10 years, while well, the SOGO program and before that the junior program. The chance to share our skills and to get out there and run around with the kids is just a fabulous thing about orienteering. One thing I really love about orienteering is the community. We're just a whole bunch of really down-to-earth, little bit nerdy people who love maps, but just like a genuinely lovely group of people of all ages, uh, lots of families. Um, and every time I get to go to a competition or a training, um, training camp or something, it's really great to see my friends from all across Canada and even friends from different countries. Um, it's just always one of the highlights for me. My favorite part about orienteering is compared to normal running, it forces you to engage your mind. You have to be in the moment, you have to be present, you have to be focused. And because of this, you know, because it, you have to think about where you're going, you know, where your connects control is, it doesn't mean the fastest runner wins the race. I mean, yes, you have to be, you know, if you're gonna compete, in a high level, you have to be a good runner, but you also have to be a really good thinker in order to succeed. Bogey, one of the questions that has come up and then it just uh, made me think of it again in that video is, uh, what is SOGO? I mean, there's, you know, everybody's talking about it. What does that stand for? Yes, so SOGO is the youth program in Calgary and it's uh, the Foothills Orienteering Club uh, youth program. and. It's been very successful introducing kids to the outdoors and adventure running. And uh, it's, it's very popular. We used to have uh, close to 10, uh, close to a thousand kids every year in the program. And it's super fun. They run in the parks every, uh, there is a different parks every night in different uh, part of the city. So it's more accessible for any part. And um, yeah, so uh, it, if you have a if you have a child who loves to be outside, or you want to get them to like outside, if you want to give them, I think uh, my kids are sorry to do orienting to, so I feel comfortable when they do their outdoor things. So if you if you're anything um, interested in that aspect, I could highly recommend uh, because they're gonna have so much fun with it, just running out there and and having a blast and. Meanwhile, not even noticing they're learning a lot about navigation. Maybe I can jump in and talk a little bit more about SOGO. It's um, so this this we actually just opened registration this spring. So we are doing 
we normally, it's normally a six or an eight week session, depending on the age, once a week for an hour to an hour and a half in a different city park. So we are doing it this spring. We're just, our numbers are way down because we're limited to the groups of 10. Um, and we start, SOGO starts at age two and goes all the way up to age 16. So, so for our preschool group, we've got uh, SOGO sports and, um, and that's just all about developing physical literacy skills in the outdoors and getting little kids just comfortable with being outside and like mother nature makes for one pretty amazing obstacle course right and so so that's what our sogo sports is about is just moving your body in a natural environment and lots of fun games and stuff like that and then starting at age six and up we've got our levels one two and three and so those each week you're working more on your map reading skills, your navigational skills, just fun outside games, a little bit of uh, fitness and endurance. And so, and it just, as you age, you'll, you'll go through the different levels. And then, and then we go into our SOGO bridge program that Jan Eric is involved with. And that's a bit of a, that's a link for our level three kids who are actually interested in taking the next step and potentially competing at the junior world championships or something like that. So that's, so we've got, we literally have programming from two to, uh, to 18 in SOGO adventure running. So quick question on that, Charlotte. So I have a 16 year old daughter who's two months from turning 17. Um, you know, and this is something she would love and especially ring out was canceled, right? Field hockey might not happen. Um, but you say that to the 16, so is that you know, is it a sport? And because it's a tough age, especially for a teenage girl, do they do they join that or do they wait and do sort of the adult side or, you know, because there might be a lot of viewers who have kids in that age who are who are kids who are a little bit intimidated. Mm -hmm. That's actually that's a good question. You know what I'd suggest in that, like, I'd love to just have a little bit of, you know, you can contact us at SoGo Adventure Running and we can Kind of figure out because it might be the best fit to go to one of the beginner classes with foothills orienteering or it, it depends a little bit i think so yeah. if it's if you were, were looking at that older age group then we'd love to have a conversation because because what's really important there is a is a social cohort that makes sense mm -hmm. right yeah. so yeah so we'd love to just talk to you if you're in that situation and we'll figure out the best the best Perfect. situation. I, I will be messaging you, but uh, okay. the SOGO the SOGO link is also uh, on the chat and we will have that posted as well. Um, you know, we, we know how even Calgary and area, I mean, we have incredible outdoor spaces. Um, Jan Eric, I wanna ask, I mean, you've now, you've represented Canada, you've been overseas with the sport, you've, you've you know, you, you do it here. Why, I mean, why isn't Canada, why isn't this one of the top sports? Why, why is this sort of unknown when you look outside and you just think, oh my goodness, we are, you know, we're in the perfect place for this. What, why hasn't it grown? And why, why are we sort of maybe, I don't know, I can say behind, but I feel like we're behind a little <laughs> bit. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, it is ironic because Canada has the most wilderness for uh, per population, really, for for anywhere, unless you're trying to compete with Russia, um, and and that's one of the things that's that's special about uh, how much orienteering we have in Calgary is that it it tends to be tough to. Uh, to make it grow in smaller towns and things because you need the maps and you need the terrain to be able to run on them. And Calgary has done such an awesome job of mapping. You'll find that tons of the, uh, the nearby mountains are mapped as well as pretty much everywhere in the city is. So there are lots and lots of places to be able to go and do it. And then, uh, but when you compare that to, um, to over in Scandinavia or over in Europe, they're much more densely populated and they're surrounded by forests. And they also have, uh, they have laws where you're, you basically automatically get a permit. You don't need a permit to go run. Um, and so there's just a less of a barrier of entry over there uh, in order to, to be able to do this. And so foothills and, and really the, the whole scene over here is wonderful. I'm actually, right now I'm in Chicago. Uh, that's where my family lives and I'm home uh, just studying school here. And I think that's one of the pieces I miss the most about is being able to be in Calgary because we have quite a few accessible maps. You, 
if any of you are in Calgary, you probably know of Nose Hill Park. We have the whole thing mapped and that's where we love to do quite a few of the Sogo Bridge trainings. Awesome. Uh, Bogey, what about registration? I mean, uh, you know, Jan Eric talked about barriers. One of the huge barriers right now is financial. Uh, so how much does it cost to join? And is it family? Is it per person? Can you, can you give everybody a little bit of, a, of an understanding? Yeah, so um, that's the other reason my family really enjoy uh, orienteering because it's very affordable and you can fit it in with other sports or whatever situation you have in their life. So uh, for example, <clears throat> the club events, if you just wanna come as a family, usually we can try it for free. Um, and, but if you wanna get involved, we require $10 of membership fee uh, per uh, person, I think this year. Um, the maps sometimes cost a couple of bucks, uh, five to 10 bucks, depending uh, on what events you involving, um, just because there's cost to make those maps and print those maps. Uh, the SOGO program, I believe it's one of the most affordable use programs out there. Um, you can check out the registration. I think it was around $125 for the spring session. Um, and also we have uh, opportunities through Jumpstart to uh, help subsidizing the fees if anyone uh, in need on that. Um, so the events usually like, if, even if you go to a championship event compared to the, some other sports I do, it's very um, affordable and entry fee runs around $30 per event. So um, I think it's, it's a really great way to get active and not gonna break the bank for sure. <laughs> You don't hear a lot of sports that say it's a $10 membership fee. So we kind of go, what did you say? Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, that, that's great. And I think, um, you know, it's something that uh, definitely has been a barrier for a lot of sports before, and especially now with, uh, you know, with the situation economically that we're in and with COVID. Uh, one of the questions that's come up, uh, and Charlotte, I'll, I'll ask you this, is you, you talked about, restricted because of the COVID restrictions down to the smaller groups. So is there still opportunity or is it sort of um, the fact that, you know, a lot of, a lot of sports might advertise and then all of a sudden it's like, well, small groups, so we're closed. Uh, is there still opportunity to register? Yes. Yeah, so we just opened registration this week for the, um, for the spring session that gets start, started later in April. And um, we, there, there are still openings. A number of the sessions did fill up really quickly but there, are, there definitely are still some openings. You'd wanna get that on that fairly soon. Um, and if COVID restrictions allow, we will we'll open our numbers as we can. So, but yes, I'm just looking on the website now and there's still some sessions available. Okay, great. Um, Jan, Eric, you know, we're, we're talking about uh, the community level right now and you've, you know, you've experienced this, um, uh, well, uh, the, the entire panel sort of worldwide, but what is the equipment? I mean, we talk about the, the map, the GPS stuff, you know, can, can sort of, I just go outside if, if I join or drop in, what equipment do I actually need to have? So there are, uh, there are two different types of orienteering races that you can do. You can do a sprint race or a forest race. And most of the ones that SOGO holds are sprint races and those are within a town. And so you can imagine, what do I need to be able to run into it in a town? I need shoes. Um, and that's about the entire gear that you're gonna need. Um, if you're going into the forest, it's nice to have a little bit more. We, there are quite a few different orienteering brands of shoes, which are, uh, they have very low padding because you don't need that when you're running on moss um, and they have much more grip. So some trail running shoes and Really, when it comes down to it, you need shoes. Um, other pieces like that, Some once you get into it, you'll get yourself a compass. Um, but most of, the, most of the additional pieces, the clubs tend to have lots and lots of extras that you get to just use for free because they know that lots of people want to just try it and no one's going to go and get a compass for, for one race. And so really what you need is just shoes. And, uh, you know, just as you're, as you're talking, I mean, I love going outside. I, I'm from Saskatchewan. I love these super cold, crisp days. So does orienteering happen year round? Um, let's pretend COVID 
is not in yeah, our world yeah. right now. <laughs> well, so that's uh, what I was touching on earlier was we have a few different disciplines in orienteering. I told you guys about the precision orienteering, which was made accessible for people with disabilities so that you can uh, just go around in a wheelchair or walk on main trails. And then throughout the forest, or, or sorry, throughout the winter, um, you'll find that a lot of orienteers are the type of people who enjoy going cross country skiing and getting outdoors in the winter as well. And so there's an entire another, um, it's called ski orienteering. And the world championships for that were held in, uh, they were held just one week ago uh, over in Europe. And so that's, that's what happens throughout the winter is there's some ski orienteering. I don't know if uh, we do as much of that, but I think that we do have a, a course in on the, in the Canmore Nordic Center that that makes it usable as well there. Charlotte is is nodding her head. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's also mountain bike orienteering as well as one mm -hmm. of the official disciplines. Also, it's not huge in Canada. Um, but the, the other thing I'll add to that is the orienteering club in Calgary, Foothills Orienteering also does weekly uh, running or walking events during the winter as well. So mm -hmm. yeah, okay. you just need to as you do, if you're out for a walk or you run, you just need to choose your footwear carefully in the yeah. winter. And yeah, the micro spikes are awesome. Um, there's a question here and I'm gonna, uh, cause this is a bit of my question too, sort of for a mid forties guy who's interested but doesn't know where to start. Um, you know, how can, can you do this beginner level? And so I'll say a, a 50 year old female, how can you, how can you yeah. start too? Because it, it is intimidating as an adult, you know, when we talk about youth and it, it's tough. It, it's really intimidating as an adult to start something when you really don't know. So, um, is that just getting to the club? Um, can you guys direct us? Yeah. Yes. Sure. So <laughs> what I would do, like, if you want to try it, uh, yeah. yourself, we're going to hopefully uh, start doing it in late April uh, through May through the summer to the fall. And the club has Wednesday nights. Uh, that's Wednesday night. Every night there is an event. And uh, that's what we usually put on try it events. Uh, so if you have nothing to do on a Wednesday night, uh, just right now you're going to probably have to sign up uh, because but before you could just show up. And um, I'm actually probably going to be there and say, hey, I'm glad to see you that you came. Um, uh, and uh, we have a little bit of activity set up and or volunteers there. And you say, I'm totally new be beginner. I don't know what I'm doing. So they'll, they'll, they'll just walk through with you. So they'll give you a little instruction, explain how it works. They'll teach you a little bit of map reading. And then oh. here is your map and go try it. And uh, you're probably not going to get lost in bonus park, right? Uh, so you're going to go out and I'm pretty sure you're going to be successful uh, completing that beginner course and say, usually when people come back, they say, hey, this is great. Now, what? how can I do it again? So hopefully you keep going back, learning more, and you can show up every Wednesday night, become a member and learn it. And um, we also try to put on some courses at the spring uh, for beginners. Uh, then you can register for that. And then you can really uh, motivate yourself to learn more. So it's literally coming out, trying, enjoying it and, and learning as you go. What I would suggest just because we don't quite know our spring schedule yet is if someone, if an adult or is interested in, in doing one of our beginner courses this spring, just send an email to uh, info at orienteeringcalvary.ca and we'll we will get, I'd love to say that we know all the dates and all the stuff right now, but we don't in our COVID world. So yeah. you just email us, we'll, uh, we'll get you connected. So we know what our programming will be. One, um, one other fun bit to think about in orienteering is what makes it so accessible as well for people to start at any age and to participate as long as they want is, uh, even when you're starting, you're able to, at the end of the race, there's a program that shows everyone's splits. So the time between each control. And this was a big motivator for me because I would always run too fast. I'd make a couple of huge mistakes, end up being absolutely last. And then you can look at the splits and say, hey, you know what? I actually did really well from these two uh, checkpoints, from this checkpoint as well. And so you're going to get to have a lot more gratification than in another sport where, you know, if you were to join soccer super late and everyone else is uh, playing, you, 
you're not going to feel like a great player versus even if you have a couple of little moves that are super good versus here, if you have a couple of good uh, controls or checkpoints, you're going to be able to see that. And, and there's that extra sense of gratification you get from that. You're not competitive at all. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, okay, we have the link uh, on the uh, on the chat, the, the email address. We're going to show you a, a quick video. Um, so take a look. When I first got into orienteering, I was always making mistakes. To those new to orienteering, making mistakes can be extremely frustrating and painful. But you just have to learn to have fun with it and learn to learn from your mistakes. Because if you're not making mistakes, you're probably doing something wrong. The newcomer might be kind of intimidated by all the things that you have to know about orienteering. That's why it's best to begin uh, carefully and slowly. Uh, the most important skill, I think, is to learn to read the map extremely well. To know what all the symbols mean and to know how to use the map to orient uh, yourself on the land and to go from point A to point B. The use of the compass and uh, you know, more developed skills like root choice uh, come after that. But the most important thing is to learn to read the map. The advice I'd give to newcomers of the sport is just go out and do it. Um, I know when I started, I was a bit worried that I didn't really know how to navigate and I didn't have a great sense of direction, but uh, there's always people at, the, at events who will be happy to tell you how to read a map, like, you know, how to use a compass, and like it's a really great skill that I've been able to develop over time and I also remember being a little timid about going off trail um, but since then it's been something that I've really learned to love so that's been really fun um, so yeah just go out and do it my best advice for you know first timers people who are just getting into it is don't rush just take it nice and slow and enjoy the experience orienteering is a super fun sport there's no reason that you shouldn't enjoy it your first time out Hi, I'm Jean, and I'd like to talk to you seniors out there about the sport of orienteering. You're never too old to learn. I'm in my late 80s, and I didn't start orienteering until I was over 65. One of the beauties of the sport is people can be extremely competitive or very laid back. It's entirely up to you, and it doesn't matter. Another huge advantage is, as well as good physical exercise, it's wonderful mental exercise. And we all know how important mental exercise is as we age. So please, consider taking up orienteering. It's a sport for people of all ages. Thank you. That's a familiar last name. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Charlotte, <laughs> relation? Uh, yeah, that's my mom. <laughs> oh, awesome. There yeah, we go. Yeah. So, uh, you know, just as we, uh, I'm, I want to be respectful of everybody's time. Um, uh, you know, truly sounds like a sport for everybody, uh, all ages. Um, you know, I really, I want to sign up and uh, people might think, oh, well, you know, sport is first nature. I, I'm intimidated. I'm a sprinter. I don't read maps well. I have no endurance. Um, and, you know, it, it's tough. So, uh, you know, I encourage everybody um, to, to sign up, to participate. Uh, I'm just going to open it up to the panel. Uh, last quick um, any words of advice or anything to the audience? Jan, Eric, I'm going to start with you. Um, yeah, I think my, my one piece of advice would just be, uh, just try it. Uh, give it, give it a chance and see how much that you like the outdoors because uh, I think this is one of the most human things you can do is to, to just go out and enjoy nature. And that's what's so beautiful about this sport is it helps you do that. Awesome, thanks, Charlotte. Yeah, you know, just, it's always intimidating to try something new, but uh, we also need to keep doing that, right? And, uh, and I think trying new sports, uh, yeah, it, why not? Um, the Calgary Club is super welcoming and, uh, and they'll absolutely help you out to, uh, to uh, create a fun experience. And it's just, it is, I love how you can do it at all ages and you can do it at whatever level you are. If you're walking, if you're running, like it just doesn't matter. So it's a super welcoming, inclusive environment. Awesome, Bogey. Yeah, I just wanted to say, I started orienteering because I had no sense of direction. I always got lost everywhere when I was a kid. And the other reason I started orienteering, I hated running. 
<laughs> I used to be a gymnast as a kid and I had to develop some endurance. So for that two reasons, somebody told me to join Orient Healing and I did. And here I am, you know, 30 years later pitching for the sport. So actually I learned to Orient Heal. I don't get lost anymore and I love running. So what can go wrong? <laughs> That's actually a good point. Some people just love orienteering because your brain is so busy navigating that you kind of forget about the physical part yeah, of it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah it's a lot of fun. A combination of, of mental and physical. Um, so we want to thank thank you to the panel. Thank you, Charlotte, Bogey, Jan, Eric. Um, thank you, everybody, for joining us for this second edition of uh, Faces of Calgary Sport. This will be posted on our website, as will the videos and all the links that you need in order to get more information. Um, so we will have our third uh, edition of Faces of Calgary Sport on March 25th, and we will be featuring Pickle ball so um <laughs> again sp uh, sports that uh you know have a local connection clubs and we will have more information more conversation thank you to the panel thank you everybody for joining us everybody stay safe um you know we're gonna get through this and uh, but sport will be part of our recovery and so uh enjoy any questions uh contact the the team the panel here and contact us at sport calgary we uh we want to be the voice of sport and we continue to help maneuver through this tough time so thank you everybody have a great rest of your day